rocking till the end of the line. How you doing folks? Anybody guess who that was? No. Steve Salas, Stevie Salas, formerly of the Stevie Salas colour code. Uh, am I coming through okay? I don't have other headphones on to, uh, to monitor such a thing, so please, please do let me know. I'm watching the, over there, watching the uh, chat on that particular, I'll make sure this is working. Seems to be working. Yeah, the World Cup final, Argentina. Remember, Argentina won in 78. It was a good year as well. Johan Cruyff, what a player for, uh, for Holland. And uh, Scotland, what was his uh, Archie Gemmell's goal against uh, Holland? Still got put out in the first round. So I, I hope you're all doing well. Hope you enjoyed the football. Um, I have my, have my show notes, a bit of, uh, a bit of housekeeping first. My, uh, my son's out watching football with his friends. So he may burst in at some point because I think he wanted uh, Argentina to win. So if the door opens, uh, there'll be a teenager shouting, Dad, uh, Argentina. And then uh, my little cat might be, wanting, uh, might be wanting in at some point as well. So I hope you're all doing well. Almost Christmas. Week to day or something like that. So I've had my show notes here. Uh, I'm playing audio from this laptop here. Um, video from this one. So we'll see how it goes. For some reason, my laptop here won't play the the audio through the sound card. So I'm having to, to kind of split it up. So uh, guitar update. So um, the volume's a little low, says Mr. Pulaski. I was trying to find my beaver research hat. Couldn't uh, couldn't find it, John. Sorry. I don't know if that's any better. I've got a new microphone as well. It's, it's all new stuff I'm using. It's, uh, how's that? I can hear that a bit better. Nice looking microphone. Uh, yes. Bavarian barbarian <laughs> salutes. Uh, new guitars. Yes. Well, first of all, let's go. Let's get to the sad news. Have a beer when uh, when I'm telling the sad news. Let me drink. Tenants, tenants. Um, five guitars have left Dunsey Towers this week. Sad times, folks. Sad times. So um, I sold. It helps when I'm a lot closer to the mic. It's like <laughs> it's like I've never been in a band for the last forty years. It's, oh, well, oh, you have to get close to the mic so people hear you. Uh, so anyway, so the. The Aria Pro 2 FV 550 from 1980. It's gone. Sold that to my friend. Um, and then, during the week, maybe Monday, Tuesday or something like that, uh, I saw a used 19, uh, 2019 Gibson Standard 50s and I saw the saw the top on it and I was like, oh man. You know, it's, I, I dust covered it. I coveted it. So I got in touch with the shop. I mean, I know the manager quite well in the shop, and I says, uh, I have a few... PJ Kobe, how you doing, sir? Um, I said, I have a few things that I might want to trade in. So I ended up trading four guitars. I traded the Greco SE450, which I featured recently, the black one with the the sort of customised silver scratch plate, and what else? Yamaha SG500. There's people going, oh, no, he's traded his Yamaha SG500. But uh, I only have enough room for, for so many guitars, so I traded that as well. And I also traded one of my Avril Lavigne Squire Telecasters. Hey, Johnny, how you doing, sir? One of my Avril Lavigne Squire Telecasters, the one with the... Pardon me. That beer's coming back at me already, I've only had one. Uh, the one with the checkerboard scratch plate, my cheap trick guitar sort of thing. Um, I still have the other one, I have the one from 2011. And who else did I trade? There was one other thing as well that I traded... I can't remember, what was it? Oh yeah, I traded on Orville, the Lemon lemon Drop Orville, LPS 75D. So it was four guitars I traded, traded for one of them, I'll show you in a second. But uh, I mean, I, I did it for a few reasons, I think. I mean, the main one is um, I have a finite amount of, like I mean, everyone else, I have a finite amount of room for guitars and I've run out of room for guitars, so I had to, I had to consolidate some and uh, so I could either sell them or trade them in. Now the thing with selling things is I could 
Ace Frehley you might like to see. I do the MD63, yes. I'd like to see. I had a 1981 uh, Greco, the, what was it? The EG600 PR. Heavy beast. It was about 11 pounds. It was massive. Uh, where was I? Yes, so I thought uh, if I sell them privately, I would get, you know, you, you get more money than trading in, obviously. But uh, it's a pain. It's a pain in the butt having to post all these things away and advertise them through eBay and Reverb and see, even worse than Facebook. I mean, I don't know if anybody uses Facebook Marketplace, but dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's nothing but scams, you know. It's, uh, I want to buy that, but uh, I can't pop around tomorrow because I'm working. So what I'll do is I'll send a courier with some money. And it says, so just a scam. So anyway, so the bottom line was I saw this PJ yeah, selling, honestly, selling privately. There's people who, whose full-time job is just to look on Facebook Marketplace just to... Just to send you stupid emails, you know, if you if you give money to a delivery guy tomorrow, but then I think that turns into some sort of insurance scam, you know, it's like, oh the guy'll turn up, but you have to you have to give him money in advance, you know, shite like that. Excuse excuse the bad language. The good thing is in my Scottish accent, you may not pick up a any bad language. So yes, I traded four guitars in for for one. Now I will like you see now I've wearing headphones, so I'll have to kinda of stretch over here a bit, so just hold on a second. There we have it. It's not quite it's not quite as red on the camera as it is in real life because it's it's almost clown burst. But, um, but look at the grain on that. Look at that. It's got really. It's like a it's like the grain goes kind of two ways, kind of across the way and up and down the way. I'd never seen anything like it before. So as soon as I saw it on the website, I was like, ah, you know what. And the other thing as well is, you know, if if I trade four guitars, and it was a good trade, you know, like for both parties. I think I think the shop, this was second hand in the shop, so the shop would have traded this in. I don't know how much he would have traded it in for, but I think I think they they'll do better out of selling the, the four guitars I traded in than selling this one. And I, I did okay, you know, I got, I got a wee bit more than what I paid for the four guitars. And the other thing as well is, if I you know if I need to sell something to because as you probably noticed, I do review a lot of guitars, you know, and I'm I'm, I'm not a millionaire. Um, I have to finance other guitars, so if I need to, say, raise, I don't know how much it is, £1,800 second hand or something. Um, if I need to raise £1,800 to buy to buy some vintage Japanese guitars, then it's much it's much easier just selling one, one Gibson than it is selling four vintage Japanese guitars. So, like us all, I'm just self-justifying. I'm justifying purchasing guitars as we all do you know like we all do it somebody's selling a yeah Mr Plasky it says uh, you, you've seen the picture um, oh sorry about that it's it's just a crate it's it's not really picked up very well in the camera but um, it really is it's like look, look at the flame on that you know don't touch it don't touch it um, so yeah I'm, I'm justifying justifying owning another guitar Mike Wheeler how you doing sir shows his effort uh, Mike Wheeler, I uh, th that's my that's my next story. I was doing a gig during the week, and Mike, I bought the um, Zemetis that I played on Wednesday night. I'll show you a photograph of it. I, I, I bought it from Mike. Very kindly, Mike agreed to sell me his, um, one of one of his Zemetis guitars. Not his uh, not his super expensive one, which I have featured on this channel, and I'm sure he I'm sure he will give me a loan of it again. So uh, yes, I got a uh, so through so this guitar came in. And I have another one in a shipping box, which I haven't, haven't had time to unbox yet. It's been here about five or six days. And it's like a cheaper version of the Zemetis. Mike, Mike may be able to inform us exactly what they are, but there's Zephyr made by Tune, I think. Tune Zephyr Z1 or ZST158. It's a bit like the, the Zemetis. And I, I believe they're made in Japan, but um, yeah, so two in. And five out. Crazy things, folks. But I, I now have I now have uh, some room, and I do have another couple on the way. But in fact, I'll I'll show you one in a second. So, so that's the first part part of my story. Is uh, I've got one guitar, and well, one one in the cupboard, but one that you can see, and I got I got a five. So on to my next my next topic.
So I did a gig on Wednesday with twisted with the twisted nerves, and uh, Mr. Wheeler was there. I think I might be showing one of his photographs here, so uh, th thanks in advance, Mike, for uh, allowing me to use your photograph without me asking you in the first place. So we were playing a place uh, in Edinburgh called the the O2 Academy, which is a big place. Uh, I think it, well, it used to be called the the Corn Exchange, so on uh, the west of Edinburgh. Kind of, it's not exactly outside the town, but it's over over that side of the city. It used to hold three thousand or something, but then um, I think. So. Oh. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. It's a Steve Vai song. Um, so that's out the other side of Edinburgh. And we're playing there. It used to hold 3,000, I think. But um, there's just capacity now. So there's maybe holds 2,000 in there. But I didn't think it was going to be busy. We were supporting Fields of the Nephilim. Sorry, legendary gothic rocksters. And um, it, was, it was way busier than I expected. Um, and I guess the issue as well is when you're just a sport man, you're always concerned that... Nobody's going to nobody's going to turn up early to see you. But we, when we walked on stage, the doors were at seven. We were on at half past seven, and uh, there was there was tons of people. And Mike Mike Wheeler was there, taking taking photographs. So I'm making a video now. The, the annoying thing is, um, my wife was was coming along to record, and a couple of friends were as well. And everybody I know has had the cold. Do you know really bad cold here? For the last couple of weeks, I've had it myself, and uh, so the people who were going to video it, none of them ended up going because they, well, they were all really unwell. Eh? Um, so I don't have any video from from the front of the stage. Uh, it's strange because you know, anytime we play in Europe, there's always tons of people videoing it, but there was not a single person that's posted any video from the front of the stage. So the only video I have is uh, drummer Dave's drum cam, which is great. You get to see what a great drummer drummer Dave is. And you just kind of see me over in the distance. It's filmed from just down beside these, beside these sort of hi hat looking across the stage. Um, but I, so I've, the audio's okay. I, I might try and boost the guitar out on that. So I'm, I'm, I'm making a video because um, it's great putting on a big stage. You know, a, a lot, an awful lot of the gigs we do are not on big stages. But uh, when you're playing one of these big things, so I played the Barrowlands a couple of times, and it's it, the sound is just so much better. You know, you have side fills. And our, our entire sound check, um, you know, we, we were all, we were the last band to sound check. Our entire sound check lasted about eight minutes, because just this the sound on stage is so good. You know, it's not like one of these small places where we, you know, usually play, where the sound takes ages to get it right, and it's a, and it's a real pain in the butt. Uh, so I have a video coming of that, but I'll show you. I've prepared a present. It's like I'm at work. It's like I'm at work. I like I'm at my day job. I've uh, I've prepared a prepared a small presentation. For you, including some of the the photographs, which one of them may include uh, include Mike's photograph. So, uh, so if I click that and add to stream, look, click that's really professional. So, hey, uh, I the twisted nerves boys, look, look at that guitar. I'll tell you what, the previous owner of that guitar must be a cool chap. So that's his name, Zematis. What was it, Mike? Can't remember the model, but uh, oh, what a great sounding guitar. So I was playing that through my blue guitar arm, one which I had. In my feet at the front of the stage, I was using my M9 and just a, a couple of uh, small pedals. Just going back to a white, I borrowed a white 4 by 12 man. I felt like I was Randy Rhodes without the talent. Eh? And it sounded great. So that's uh, I prepared a slideshow. I hope the next one works. That's slide one. But we couldn't put the backdrop. See the bit in the red at the front with twisted nerve. Couldn't put the, drop, the backdrop in front of the, the headliners. You know, you just you're not allowed to do that. It's frowned upon. So. Uh, Pardon me, here's what somebody wrote on Facebook. Twisted nerve sounding a bit early cult. So we sound a bit like the early cult. Now, I don't want to get an argument here, but I understand that Twisted Nerve were formed long before the cult. Sporting the legendary feels of the Nephilim. So some chap took that. So you can see, it was, uh, there was a lot of people there watching us. It was, um, it was an exciting point to a big crowd. Like that. I was like, I've got a sore back. and sort of leaning into it there, leaning in that one. I think uh, Craig the Singer's coming across to say, are you alright Dunsey, we're so back? Cool with all these uh, lights as well. Look at that. I've got a new hat. I'm, I'm wearing, wearing my new stage hat in that photograph. And uh, that's the last one. That's the one that Dave, Dave Lewis is talking about. So uh, th that's the end of the gig. You know, so hands up, thank you. I mean, it really was, it went down so well. Um, it was great, you know, it's just, it's just great to go out and 
do these big places. And then, <laughs> oh, Johnny, feel like Steve Jones on a budget. I know. I feel like uh, I feel like anybody. I feel like I'm Tigers of Pan Tang on a but on a really low budget. You know, so this stuff I do. Um, so yeah, after the gig, you know, just we're all sitting backstage going, yeah, you know, high fiving or oh, brilliant fist bumping and that. And then uh, we come to the end of the night and the van broke down. So <laughs> it was minus seven or something outside. It was bloody freezing. So we uh, were outside and uh, the van with all our gear in it was broken down. Ah, uh, so, oh, dear, dear. So what we had to do is we had to, try to transfer my guitars into the bass player's car and then he drove me home and he had to drop everybody off in their respective houses and we left most of the gear just in the van outside the venue. We had to push the van out from the front of the venue into the, the main street where there wasn't any sort of parking restrictions. About half eleven at night, minus seven, you know. And you know, b- between you and me, we'd had a few beers and intervening times pushing that blooming van that wouldn't start out into the street. So it was a uh, rock and roll, you know, that's what it's all about, folks. Remove that and go back to to me. So what else have I been doing? Uh, I'll answer any questions as well. If anybody's got any questions, please. You see, I'm watching it on my my laptop over here, so I'm hopefully not missing. Uh, I'm hopefully not missing any chat. Mike's not allowed to ask me a question because he, he's a personal friend and he comes around here, so uh, he already knows the answer to these questions. Live chat. PJ Kobe, somebody's selling a chips and gold top Facebook. <laughs> Twelve hundred bucks, man. Yeah. You see a lot of that, eh? I mean, I, I've thought about getting getting one of these students. Like, I, I, I know John's got an Ace Freely one, and he's got specifically with the view that he's an Ace Freely fan, and, and he he wanted the guitar, the Ace plays, but man, you know, without dropping the five thousand pound Gibson Custom Shop price on one. So I've often thought about getting one, you know, like Aces or like you know, famous Les Paul that they'll make for like three hundred pounds, but you know, could end up being unplayable, but I guess if you if you know what you're getting, you know, three hundred dollars you're buying a chips and the problem really comes as everybody knows that if you then try and pass it off as, as the real thing, you know, you change the change the bridge studs to, to non slotted ones and stuff like that. Um, you know, you, you don't want these things getting out into the marketplace. People trying to, to scam folks on them, you know, people trying to trying to get what was it? <laughs> Twelve hundred dollars for a chips and gold top, eh? Dear dear. An itchy nose, sorry about that. No, for no reason other than I have an itchy nose, that, that's all is. I'm not I'm not a rock star. Uh, Mike saying it says the mate is G Z twenty six hundred IF and I think he said the IF is for inlay front, I believe. So uh, so that's what I was doing this week. That was the gig update. Now I bought a couple of pedals as well. And uh it's like I said, I'm not a strat guy. I suddenly own like six strats. It's like I'm not really a pedal guy, but I bought a, a bigger pedal board than I had, and I bought a, I bought the Karma Sutra. Yep. The Catlin bred Karma Sutra, which is a, a like a fuzz pedal, and I watched the uh, I watched quite a lot of the, the demos, and it sounded great. But big but what I hadn't taken into consideration was. Uh, uh, the demos mostly included um, single coil guitars, and uh, I, I don't I don't really play single coil guitars live, so I'm, I'm not convinced. I used this at rehearsal the other week there. I didn't use it at the gig. What was the first punk track I ever learned? First punk track I would be doing to do teenage kicks. I would expect, like uh, like every single other person, probably probably teenage kicks would have been it. Um, I'll I'll, I'll do something another day. There. I'll, I'll I'll change sort of, change sort of tact here. Uh, doing something another day, there. and I still remember the. It's not punk, but it's con kind of from that era. You know the melody of melody line of Enola Gay. Uh, who's the, who didn't do yesterday? Do 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 do. And that was one of the first things I learned how to play in the guitar. That I could only play the melody line. I couldn't play any of the chords, and also. Um, Stiff little finger song standing on the edge, um, at, at the edge. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't play the chords, but I worked out how to play the just the melody notes. Eh? That was one of the first things I learned. It was a few years before I learned the chords of it, but um, that was it. Uh, so yes, I've got uh, the Karma Sutra, which sounds fantastic on 
single coil guitars, but I'm, I'm not 100% convinced through my blue guitar amp, one with the with humbuckers. And I also got, I'm not sure if that audio's crackling. OMD, that was it, Johnny, thank you. Yes, OMD. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I, honestly, if I picked up a guitar now, I could probably just play that. And it's, it's one of the first things I can remember, uh, remember sort of picking out. You know, I was a heavy metal guy, but it was... Heavy metal was difficult. I could play. I could play that that melody line. I could play the vocal line. I couldn't play any of the guitars. And I also got the MXR Univibe. I've had a I've had a few of these over the years. And like I say, I'm not a pedal guy. So what I do is for two years I don't buy any pedals. Maybe four years I don't buy anything. And then I buy loads of. And then I'll sell them all in a couple of years. So I've got that. And I've got a bigger pedal board. And I'm going to I'm going to make a pedal board which I'll use for about two months. And then I'll go back to using my my Line Six M Nine. The, the problem I have is that, um, OMD, Hammersmith, um, the problem I have is that I do a lot of gigs um, locally. Like, when, when I mean locally, I mean I walk to them and I don't walk home, you know, for, for various reasons after being out for five hours and being on the beer. Uh, but I do walk to them or I just get the bus, you know, rock and roll, I get the bus just and I take one guitar, two leads, and I normally just take, have you seen that little Donner pedal thing I've got? It's only it's got like an overdrive, chorus and delay. So I, I, a lot of these gigs, I, I would never take a big pedal board too. It's just it's just a right pain in the butt. So I just I go through phases, you know, I get a massive pedal board and then I, I realise I don't need it. So uh, yeah, so I got the Karma Sutra and I got the the Univibe. I like the Univibe. It's, um, I don't know why this is crackling. So that was it. Um, what have we got? What have we been listening to this week? Actually, here's another thing. The reason I played Stevie Salas at the beginning was um, I saw Steve Salas. Nineteen. I was buying on this to Mike the other day. I saw um, Steve Salas at the venue in Edinburgh supporting Twenty Four Seven Spies. I think it was nineteen ninety. I think it was or something like that. Eighty nine, ninety, maybe ninety one. And uh, I'd heard, I had heard, before that, I'd heard, The Harder They Come, of the Steve Salas Colour Code album, which, uh, brilliant, absolutely such a good guitar player, and he was uh, playing a, a very small venue in Edinburgh, I think it held about 500 people or something, 24-7 spies were rubbish, but uh, Stevie Salas was great, and he's such a, such a good guitar player, and uh, I'd been listening to Stevie Salas, Last week, sorry, you know, reminiscing about how good the early 90s were when I had hair on my head and not just on, on my face. And when I was looking for guitars on, um, looking for guitars on Zen Market, this thing turned up. So if I can share a screen window. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so this turned up. It's a, a washburn. It's got a blooming Floyd Rose, eh? it's a Washburn Mercury MG722 and it's Steve Salas's, um signature model. Uh, I don't think they made many of them, they made an American one which is probably two or three times the price of this one. But this came up on my on my watch list on Zen Market and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to buy it. So, <laughs> so I bought a Super Strat, eh? I bought, bought the Steve Salas Super Strat. So that'll probably be here in March or something like that. With a Floyd Rose. I've not owned a Floyd Rose on a guitar since a Charvel Model 4 in 1987. So it'll be interesting, you know, watching an old guy trying to tune a Floyd Rose. Uh, that's going to be interesting. And um, there you go. So that, that'll be coming, be coming in the next few months. Um been working on a few lessons as well, and I have to say, I've got half a dozen emails I'm, I'm trying to reply to, and I, I keep meaning to do, and I keep forgetting, but I've had a few emails about things, about learning sort of easy riffs, like Saxon easy riffs and stuff like that, uh, and I'm, I'm going to do a bit more of that, so the first album, what, what I'm looking for is albums where um, you, you can just you can just play along with, you know, something that's not particularly difficult, and I'm going to show maybe five or six so five or six main riffs from the album and then you can just sort of take on board. It will be easy stuff, you know. I'm not showing any Yes songs or anything like that. Um, and you can just jam along with the album and it'll be, you know, two, three, four chords 
um, maybe do some of the very easy leads. So the first album I'm doing is I'm probably going to end up doing um, all the songs from this apart from two because it's one of my favourite albums of all time and it is. Don't know if anybody wants to hazard a guess as to what album I'm about to show. Oh, I'll just show you anyway. The first Faster Pussycat album. This is a work of genius, I have to say. So I'm probably going to do everything on this apart from No Room for Emotion, which I don't really like. Um, and maybe Bottle in Front of Me. I mean, they're okay songs, but I don't really want to show them. And Bottle in Front of Me includes the line, I've got a bottle in front of me like a front on the bottom of me. That's genius. Um, so I'm, go I'm going to do probably most of the riffs on this because it's, it's dead easy to play. Like if you do uh, um, Cat House, four chords, the whole, it goes G, F uh, to C for the verse, uh, for the intro, and the verse is just G and C. Is, it's one of these records who, if I do if I do like lessons on these, you, honestly you don't have to be any particularly great shapes of a guitar player to to play along with this, I'm, I'm going to do a few more things out because I find it's, I mean, it's, it's dead easy for me just to to fire out a video there like of a cheap trick uh, or, or cheap trick or, or ZZ Top, and me just to say, oh, it's easy, it's easy because uh, it's fine me saying that, you know, I, I I've been playing c consistently, some would argue persistently, for four decades, you know, and, and playing in bands, I, I've, I've never I've never really taken a break from it, so it's fine for me just to say, this song's dead easy. But I, I understand that if you've taken a break from guitar playing, you're just coming back to it that, you know, it's it's not as easy as, as some guy just going, oh, it's just three chords, just three chords. So, uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do a few, like a whole album, or maybe half an album that, that I'll put out there where, where I think most of the stuff on it, rhythm guitar-wise, is, um, is easy, just so you can, just to get your confidence up, you know, just to to fire a record on and and if if you can bash through most of the songs just playing rhythm guitar, you know, that it, it gets your confidence level up to 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 do whatever, you know, just to get into a rehearsal room to to jam with your mates. Cause I mean, that's all I've been doing. I've I've been in rehearsal rooms for, you know, four decades, but essentially I've just been jamming with my mates. It just happens at the time we've we've done gigs and released records and stuff like that. But it's not it's it's not any different. So I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna do a few easy what I consider air quotes, easy, where you can just you hopefully pick it up and play along and then, it, and then you feel good about it, you know, you think, oh man, I, this this is cool, I can do this, I can do this, which is it's what it's all about, you know, it's, it's all about, guitar's about having fun, as far as I can see, because I mean, I can, I can assure you, that I've not made much money with it in uh, my career, so uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that, and... What else am I going to do? Wasted, probably the first Wasted album. That may be for more intermediate players. I've done a few of the Wasted. Um, I did the whole mini album. I've done a couple of songs from The Good, The Bad, The Wasted. So I'm going to do the first album with Ronnie Kayfield now. I will, I will stress I'm not going to be attempting to play any of Ronnie Kayfield's solos. He is an incredible guitar player, Ronnie Kayfield. But I'm going to do some of the riffs from the tunes on the, on the first Wasted album, which is... Uh, Brilliant album, one of my favourite albums, that one. And according to my show notes, what else have I been listening to this week? I'm going to, I'm going to roll back the ears here. I mean, I say this week, but I tend to listen to Helen Back all the time. We're in the Helen, Helen Back t-shirt. I was at a gig, maybe about two months ago or something, I went to see Lillian Axe. And a guy ended up having a conversation with a guy about Helen back. It's a small world, folks. A small world. So uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to maybe do some some lessons for uh, for the mighty, the mighty Helen back, who I think were from South Shields, North Shields, one of the Shields, I think, or maybe Walsh, Walsall or Walsh End or something like that. But the guitar player Dave Patton. Incredible, incredible guitar player. Um, very Eddie Van Halen, actually. They were like a sort of 
good time, fun van, kind of Northern England Van Halen. But they, that they, they sound better than I've just described them. They were they were absolutely brilliant. I mean, I don't I don't know if they're on Spotify. I don't know if you can find them, but um, that's how you spell the name, Helen Bach, and uh, the guitar player, such a good guitar player, Dave Patton. Uh, the guy I was speaking to actually said he's been he's been quite ill. Dave Patton's been quite ill. He ended up sorry he ended up playing with uh, Glenn Hughes, and he did a couple of other things as well, but. Yeah, very good guitar player. And the Mama's Boys. Who remembers the Mama's Boys? Hands up, who remembers the Mama's Boys? Irish band. Three-piece band, the Mama's Boys. Classic, sort of rock, Thin Lizzy, but more, a bit heavy metal, a bit of blues. But traditional Irish folk as well from the from the early eighties. So I've got about I saw them in Bathgate of all places now. If you ever have a spare ten minutes and you're not from Scotland, look up Bathgate on um, on the internet and you'll think what they they played in Bathgate. How did they end up in Bathgate? And it was on this tour, the Turn Up tour, and I I know that because they were all wearing Lee jeans. And I'll say. It was a tour sponsored by Lee Jeans. They had uh, Lee Jeans jeans, Lee Jeans jackets, Lee Jeans t-shirts. And they played this tiny club in Bathgate called the the Cane Park Hotel. And the guitar player Pat, what a guitar player Pat is as well. So uh, yeah, I've been rolling by the years listening to Helen Black and the Mama's Boys. So it's always difficult trying to work out what to do lessons for because, you know, my, my lessons never seem to be particularly popular compared to uh, guitar review videos, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to help people how to show them how to play guitar. You know, if if, if I can play a song, I'm I'm all for trying to help someone else to to learn to play as well. So, so uh, that's my plans. Uh, no sleep till Bathgate. Exactly, Dave Lewis. Exactly, no sleep till Bathgate. Yeah, Dave Lewis bought the. Uh, Skinner, the guitar video, sh guitar shop video I did, the Skinner one, Dave, uh, Dave Lewis bought that Epiphone Skinner, and to be fair, the shop set the guitar up, um, I I'm almost glad, like I said in the in the video, that it wasn't set up the way I would like it, because I would, I would have bought it, I don't need another guitar, as I've, as I've just proven by getting, getting ready five, um, but, but I'm a huge Skinner fan. And when I saw it, I thought, I'm just I'm going to buy that. And then I played it and I thought, nah, I'll need to set that up. So it's, uh, it's been beneficial to, to Dave Lewis. He's uh, He's got the gold top and uh, <clears throat> I don't have another guitar that I will need to sell at some point in time. I, will, I, think, I think that one will increase in value. I mean, when was that? 2003, so they didn't make a lot of them. So uh, that's probably a good one to tuck away. Uh, after playing, you know, 50 hours of Leonard Skinner done it as well. First Anti Nowhere League album was great to jump to. Uh, what's the song? For You. Um, I did learn how to play that one earlier on as well. Um, for You, I Will Be a Soldier. For You. That's, I think there's only three chords in that one as well. Uh, yeah, a lot of these early things, like I've said in a lot of my videos, you know, I, I grew up a heavy metal fan. All my mates I ended up in bands with are all heavy metal fans, but that sort of time, 1980, 81, 82, there was a lot of sort of hardcore punk about as well. And uh, I picked up a lot of guitar playing from from that sort of thing as well. Um, like The Exploited, you know, I, st I still love The Exploited as much now. Uh, I've tried to get an interview with Big John, he's back in Edinburgh just now, so uh, I'll try and speak to him in the next couple of weeks over the Christmas holidays. Sam's Budget Guitars, how you doing, sir? All good here, all good here. Uh, I think that's about it, I don't have much else to say. I've showed you my new Gibson guitar, showed you my new pedals, told you about the gig, what I've been listening to, and that's it. Oh, and I'll put that out there as well. Again, I do apologise for the people I've not replied, um, who've emailed me and stuff like that, especially a couple of chaps in America, who you know, I need to get back to, because I, like, I'm really keen um, to do a couple of interviews with people who saw, who saw bands in the States. My mate Fred's going to do it. And uh, I, I might have a friend in near the Grand Rapids area in, in Michigan, United States of America, who who may make a short list of 
the best gigs he's ever seen and uh, do an interview with me at some point. So, uh, yeah, so I am keen to to put together some video interviews with people talking about bands that you saw in the 70s, 80s in America. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and just, just to see what it was like, you know, because... Here in the U- here in the UK, you know, we we could see Saxon, Motorhead, UFO, and these bands. These bands toured every year, but bands like Kiss and Aerosmith. I think Kiss played Wembley for the first time in seventy six or something, and then didn't come back again until nineteen eighty. I think Aerosmith perhaps played. Um, did they play Red in one year? Maybe a gig at Hammersmith as well. But we we, we never saw these bands, and then Stars Stars never played here until about six years ago. So I, I would like to know, I'd like to speak to people to, just to hear what it was like going to see these bands. Um, my, my friend living above the 12th is always um, putting concert. Like if, if I post a video, he'll say, well, I saw this band, and then he'll put the whole bill, sport bands, and I was like, oh man, what you saw, you saw Riot supporting, you, you know, and so on and so forth. So I would like to speak to a couple of people just to, just to do a quick interview, and I appreciate not everybody wants to be on, on camera. So, uh, I mean, I, I get that. I get that because if you know, if if you're putting your face out there in public, people can be cheeky. People can be cheeky about you. you know, people have people have said I'm fat. If you can believe that, but uh, yeah. So I'd like to do that if anybody's willing to do. It, I'm uh, I'm looking to do a couple of interviews with people who saw bands in the seventies and especially in America, and. Let me know who was, you know, the whole sort of concert experience. What was it like going to, to the gig and stuff like that? Who, who was the best man you saw, etc., etc. So, so that's just about me. Do I have a favourite guitar or number one? Um, yes, my nineteen sixty five Gibson Melody Maker which I did a video on about six months ago or something like that. Um, it's just got the perfect neck. It's got the absolute perfect neck. Uh, the six, I've got a 63 melody maker, which the neck is slightly thinner. I mean, it's, it's, it's rounded, but the, the actual nut width is slightly thinner. And then uh, I've played 67 SGs, um, and the neck on them, the nut width is tiny, like you're talking... 40 millimetres, maybe 39 millimetres or something. But for some reason, the 65 melody makers, Trogley says this as well, um, when he's had the 65s, he said they're just some of his favourite guitars. That's because of the neck shape and it's so light as well. I mean, I think it's only about five and a half pounds or something. And it's so resonant. Um, the one I have has got Gibson T-tops in it. I think the previous owner said it was converted to Gibson T-tops in 1970, so it's got a part number uh, uh, T-tops in it from 1970, so it's got old pickups in it and it's just, it's such a comfortable resonant and it's beat up, like it's a sort of guitar, like it's one of the guitars if I'm doing a, a gig in a, a local sort of covers band bar, I'll take that with me, I mean, mainly well, for two reasons, one, it's r- three reasons one, is really light so if I'm carrying it, I don't take my guitars in a big, in a in a, in a uh, hard shell case. So I've got it on my back. It's really light. Two, it plays so well and it sounds great. And three, it's so beat up. I don't think anybody would steal it. You know, like if somebody saw this guitar, they would go, uh, "It's got Gibson on it." But look, you know, look at the shape it's in. I wouldn't. You know, no point in stealing that. It's probably not worth anything. So that is probably my. My favourite guitar. So the the two guitars I would never sell are the Squire Stevie Caster, the eighty six made in Japan Squire Telecaster, which I've got Stevie Nicks holograms on. I can't sell that because my mate gave me it for nothing. He gave me it about twenty years ago. He got it for his twenty first birthday from his now ex wife, and he said, uh, "Do you want that guitar?" And it's it's a nice playing guitar. And I went, "Yeah, I wouldn't mind." Because I only had one other guitar at the time. This would have been 1997. Only owned one guitar, and he gave me that. Um, but he said, "Keep it, do what you want." Because I've changed everything on it, um, but but don't sell it. So that's the two guitars I'd never sell. And and that's the thing, you know. When I said I tra- traded four guitars in, all my guitars are for sale. Like uh, all the guitars I review here, 
you know, if they're all for sale. It's not like I'm, I'm buying stuff and hoarding it. Um, I do get new stuff in, and I have to sell stuff that I have to, to finance getting new stuff in. Like I said, I don't have a bottomless pit of money, um, to to finance buying guitars. So, if anybody in the UK sees any of the guitars that I'm playing and they want to buy it, then just draw me an email. You know, I'm I'm sure I'll cut you a much better deal than you would get. From EV, EB or Reverb or anything like that, I'm, I'm not looking to make any particular great amount of money. I'm not flipping guitars right, left and centre. I'm just looking to pass on and then to, to refinance uh, something else to, to do review because, you know, I've, I've been trying to do like one guitar review a week or something. So, um, yeah, if you want to buy any guitar that I'm demonstrating, then please, please just do get in touch and, you know, see if we can come to a deal. Apart from my 65 Melody Maker, I'm a 1986 Squire Japan Stevie Caster, Telecaster, which I think would have been, it was a, a budget guitar when they came out, but it's, it's a really nice guitar, you know, it plays, plays and sounds fantastic. So I think that's about me, I, was, I wasn't convinced I was going to play my guitar, um, but I could maybe have a, the one that upset the wife too, exactly PJ, you know how, you know how it goes man. I've decided to blow so I to pick up in my blue Gibson. Uh, I do, yes, I. Uh, I'm not sure if it's out. I was using it at rehearsal there, did I? Hold on, hold on. Nah, it's still in a bloody case, so I was using a rehearsal, yes, the blue um, Gibson Les Paul Special Tribute DC, I was putting a, a white, um, white uh, super distortion in, and uh, I broke the switch, I broke the blooming switch, so I had to buy a new switch, but it's all working now, it looks great as well, going to do a video on that, recording some stuff at rehearsal, Um Sounds great, it's got a real, it's probably, um, it's maybe the ideal mixture, it's got a P90 in the front, it's got the Gibson P90 in the front, which is 9.5k or something like that, and the Super Distortion will be, I don't know, what are they, 15, 16, so it's got a great sound, the only thing I would like is, it's only got one volume control, because ideally, um, when I do these covers gigs, I'm just using one guitar and I take a Les Paul, and I use the house um, Marshall uh, Orange Stack, which is a one channel amp. So my clean channel is the, the neck pickup with the volume turned down to half, um, which I can't do on this particular guitar because it's only, it's only got one volume controller. Um, so I might look into to doing something with that, but it's great. And it was funny when Trogley did his video saying you could probably fit a humbucker in here, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to give that a try. You do have to buy uh, a new scratch plate, but that was tw 25 quid or 29 quid or something, so... Yeah, I would. Uh, if you have one of these, it's definitely worth trying out. You don't have to do it into the guitar. You don't have to uh, route out for a humbucker. It just fits directly into to the bridge. And I think the neck one would fit as well. So you just need to get a new scratch plate, and uh, you're you're good to go. Good to go. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I wasn't going to play my guitar, but I might just plug in. Might just play along with a song and then go and drink beer. Uh, my son should be back in from watching the football, so I'll see what he's. Uh, See what his take on the, the result was. So I'll plug my guitar in and I'll see if it works. Bear with me, folks. Bear with me. Technical difficulties again. It's because uh, I don't want to plug stuff in and just have it kind of humming away in the background like that. See that big click. So, I mean, does anybody want to hear me play guitar? I'll just, uh, I'll quickly fire through two cover songs. I mean, I can't even remember the solos properly, so I'll maybe miss out the solos. Eh? Oh, clean sound. A clean out tune sound. So, um, so this is my new Gibson. Vincent Brennan's going for it. 
Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. I didn't know you used to uh, you used to frequent this area. It's a small world. And go to uh, Vinyl Villains, eh? It's bloody freezing here, so my guitars are all out of tune. I'll tell you a funny... Is that a funny story? I'll tell you a story, anyway. Uh, just before I did this, when I was, after watching World Cup Final, I was watching... Just scrolling through my video feed on YouTube, and uh, there was a there was a guy playing the guitar solo for what's the Guns N' Roses song November Rain. I mean, I, I like Guns N' Roses like in the first couple of albums, anyway. and uh, th- the guy played the so- the solo it sounded perfect. It, well, it looked sorry, it looked perfect. It looked like he was hitting all the right notes, but he didn't seem to have he didn't seem to have retuned his guitar to like. To E flat, but well, I've never tried to play that song, but I would guess it's an E flat or thereabouts. So <laughs> it was. Just, I was sort of thinking, like the guy obviously has has the talent to to play this, but how did he not know this is not in tune? It was the most bizarre thing ever. It was like you know you you must have practiced for a long time to get that good, but uh, he seems to be cloth deaf. Cloth ears, sorry, excuse me, have cloth ears. I don't know. Right, I'm going to turn my microphone down. I'm going to quickly play through two songs. Um, these are for my good friend. Parking was fun during the I know. I tell you, when I... Uh, they brought in the parking, Vincent. They brought parking in... Uh, in that area uh, when I lived there. And they did a... The council did a survey and they said... When they did the survey analysis, says, the overwhelming amount of uh, locals have said they're happy to pay for parking. And I thought... This is this is Scotland. People people do not want to pay money when they don't want when they don't have to pay money. So they brought parking in. Because I have to pay to park. I'm in the same, still in the same area, so I have to pay uh, to park right outside my house. You know, it's about hundred and forty pound a year or something like that. Yeah, PJ uh, E flat. It, like I say, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm not knocking anyone on YouTube because the guy's obviously was obviously a, a good guitar player. He he could play the song, he didn't have any any difficulty actually playing it by the looks of it, but it just, it was like he hadn't retuned his guitar. And he, he put, you know, at no point did, was there a retuning of the guitar, he just played through the whole thing in the, in the wrong tuning. It's just strange, you know. I mean, how can you, how can you learn to play? You know, when you're learning to play, you have to know the notes and the sound of the note to, to learn how to play it. You know, like the interval between the note you're playing, you know, so you're not tone deaf. Then how you could, uh... anyway, I'm not knocking them. It was just, uh, I thought it was amusing. It was like, oh dear. There'll be videos on Dundee's Guitar World that are way worse. Uh, already there, and ones which will be there at some point in the future. So I'm going to switch to a Marshall JCM 800 set. I don't know why I've got <laughs> Sounds alright, I think. I think so. So what I'll do is, uh, folks, I, I genuinely do appreciate everybody turning up. You know, it's been a it's been a busy night for the football fans, and uh, it's a Sunday evening. You know, in in Scotland, I think is the east coast of the states. Are you six hours behind us? Um, I don't know if I'm going to get back this year because um, I'd love. We've been to Raleigh, like we've got friends in Raleigh, North Carolina, so we've been three or four times, and. I'm hoping to get back next year, but I'm not 100 percent sure because of finances. But I've got to say I love America. I've been to uh, North Carolina, Zebulon, North Carolina. I visited uh, my wife and I. We visited I think 14 states, and uh, I just I love the, love America. So I'm hoping to be back, and uh, I'd like to get back to, to Michigan and go to Mr. Pulaski's house and try his guitars, so we can make a Dunsey's Guitar World video at John Pulaski's house. Now, I'd really like to do that, because we went out to uh, the Gibson factory when we were there, and then I went out to Lake Michigan, which is great, because there's no sharks, no sharks, no salt. Great. So, uh, folks, if I don't see beforehand, I hope you have, hope you have a fantastic Christmas, a great uh, festive season. I'm maybe going to do another couple of videos before, before the end of the year, but I might take a couple of weeks off to to relax and recharge, and then... Do, do some Helen back videos that no one will be interested in, apart from a guy that I met at a gig in Edinburgh a month ago. I can see a small world. 
So I will manually cue these songs. I'll turn my mic down and uh, I think we should be ready to go. And I'll try and focus on my, my guitar so you can see me playing the wrong notes in Technicolor. So I'll turn my mic down so i uh, catch you all later.